I think uh, um, maybe for the next session, if Michelle could present first, because I think it makes more sense. No problem. That's okay. Uh, I don't know, Michelle, are you okay with that? Or? No, I'm fine. Sorry. Uh, um, am I there? Am I with you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just because you provide more context and then I'm more of a project, so. Yeah, I'm just like struggling with my mouth. It's just jumping up and down. But yeah, sure, I can do that. Okay, great. Yeah, it, it, it does make sense, as you say, you know. Welcome to everyone joining. This is Room 6, the DSI Africa Wide Room. We'll just give everyone a minute or two to join. Sorry, while waiting, uh, Amos, I saw you had your hand up at the earlier session. Did you have a question? Uh, actually, I, I, uh, how are you, Samir? I'm good. How are you doing, Amos? I'm, I'm good. Um, I think a, a lot of things I mentioned were the things that people were talking about, but I just wanted to echo something. Mm -hmm. um, in as much as the uh, Elawazi El platform is meant to uh, to build this distributed infrastructure, I think there could be more that can be achieved with it. And I only wanted to mention this because I know a number of you will be getting into a number of rooms and you can also try sharing this going forward. Uh, so I've been looking at it and everything. So I think if we can equally, uh, other than just looking at... Um, just visiting data itself and also mm. having into consideration the different jurisdictions in Africa. Uh, you can also look at the prospect of increasing the, the jurisdictions uh, uh, just having server in, in Uganda as well. You can see what are the prospect of having so many servers in many jurisdictions. Because I think with that, it will give you an umbrella maybe to cover yourself from some of these um, questions that are coming in from the, the government uh, data protection offices. And um, also, even on top of that, I think because data is going to build up, it's going to grow, uh, and um, um, a lot of researchers will want to use it, the PhD and master's students. So having a, maybe an infrastructure also build on this something like uh, a Jupyter notebook that is distributed uh, on depending on where it is located. Um, I think Samir, I, I may take longer on this, so I'll just let you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but please join our infrastructure working group meeting because uh, these are the discussions we kind of have at the infrastructure working group meeting. So please do join us, Amos. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, really, thanks. Good points. All right. Thank you so much. Welcome once again to everyone. This is Room 6, the DSI Africa Wide Room. Uh, my name is Tino. I am the web developer for the DSI Africa Coordinating Center, and I, along with Ashley, will be your facilitator for today. So how this will work is that we'll have um, our presentations from our two presenters. And then after they have both presented, then we'll open up the floor for uh, Q&A. Um, but feel free to introduce yourself in the chat in the meantime. And if you have any questions uh, during the presentations, you can put them in the chat as well. And then we'll take them up at the end. Um, so I think uh, without further ado, we will have our first presenter, which will be Dr. Michelle Skelton from the DSI Africa Coordinating Center. Over to you, Michelle. Thanks so much. Let me just get myself organized here with my screen share. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. Great. So yeah, so I'm Michelle Skelton, also based at the University of Cape Town, and I am the lead on the uh, coordinating center component of the LYZ Open Data Science Com um, Consortium um, uh, Coordinating Center project, and Nikki Malta is of course the lead on the ODSP. Um, so because uh, many of the DSI Africa projects cut across so many. Um, sectors like health, um, climate, environment, social determinants, um, 
and food systems, it's really important that the coordinating things integrates a cohesive interdisciplinary network and, and this would then facilitate um, data science driven innovations and solutions towards the complex health challenges we have in Africa. So to achieve this, we have six specific aims and broadly I've listed them here and we focus on administration and communication, cross consortium activities, we the custodians of resources and databases. We also coordinate training across the consortium on capacity development, and we also offer training travel fellowships within the consortium. We also um, support outreach and stakeholder engagement. And of course, we um, are responsible for assessing the impact of the consortium um, achievements and will run the ME uh, surveys as well. So just this shows the uh, uh, structure of the organization with the coordinating center um, sort of based in, in the core, but very closely linked to the Alwazi ODSP. We work closely as well with all the projects, the training, research and LC projects. We support working group activity. We work very closely with the NIH program staff as partners, as this is a cooperative agreement um, type of fund. We support the steering committee working closely with the chair and the co-chair. There is um, potential to convene expert committees to um, inform us or support us on IP or data sharing, but these have not been convened yet. So this shows, and, and Francis spoke about this previously, our footprint across Africa. So there are seven research hubs, seven research training programs, four LC projects, and one open data science platform coordinating center. And we are spread across 19 African countries. Um, more projects are being onboarded, um, but we don't have all that information at the moment. And that will um, in improve the, the footprint we have in Africa. So the cross consortium activities that we oversee includes the steering committee, as I said, the working group activities and consortium meetings. At the steering committee, we really use this platform to engage the projects, the PIs, we host um, project um, progress reports. Um, this is the design project that re reported recently and also the RETSA project headed by Kimanthi Moodley that reported recently at Steering Committee. We also hear regularly from the working groups and the updates. Um, and we also invite external stakeholders, um, organizations like Lacuna Fund um, and Wellcome Trust, uh, whether we have alignments with them or these new innovations or new opportunities or new partnerships that could be built between the various groups. So just to focus a bit on our working groups, there are four working groups. The training and education working group is really there to harmonize the training efforts across the consortium, identify needs, uh, training needs and gaps but also um, uh, pull the resources and point to those resources so that they're not lost. So we're looking at various mechanisms to do that around awkward, awkward ID, identification and then creating so, sort of a platform or a space where we can have all those resources pulled. Um, I'll talk a bit later about the introduction to data science flagship course that they're also working on. The data management working group very important to facilitate collaboration across the consortium because we really do want to um, harmonize those data sets coming out of the group so that they can be merged and can have more powerful analysis of, of course in the end. So they focus on data models, standards and harmonization, the tools, the infrastructure for storage and cloud and, and cloud, um, as well as fair implementation. So there's really a lot going on between this working group and the, the various projects, especially the data analysis, the data um, administrative cores. Um, the data governance working group, there's a lot going on in that space as well with all the various data protection policies globally, um, as well as with, on, within the continent. 36 countries have, have, have adopted data protection policies. Um, and this group really works towards um, developing a policy info for internally for DSI to um, share better across borders, across jurisdictions. So a lot of work going on there, a tough, a tough um, task really. Um, the partnerships and outreach group, um, this is a group organizing our network exchanges, but also other events like collaborative workshops, like we recently um, worked with the deep learning Java, specifically Sisoke Biotech, on a workshop with a, a contingent of the DSI group presented at that meeting in Ghana this just um, earlier this month. 
so um as I said, we also we use our working group act, um, platforms as well to engage other organizations around policy, especially if they've experienced, have experienced um, internationally. Um, one project here dealing with um, data sharing laws in Italy um, and also within the EU. We have we have engaged uh, Mark, Mark McCarthy from, from Genentech, um, really looking at collaborations between pharma and African scientists to create large genomic data sets and what those agreements or those partnerships may look like. Um, so there's an opportunity there as well. As I said, we are the custodians of, of um, various resources and databases. We use Active Collab to manage our various activities because we have many working groups, many activities. We, uh, we can develop spaces for each of those to track documents, disseminate emails, and um, send agendas. Um, so with the, the LYZ ODSBCC, we're working together to offer a REDCAP database training and symposium coming up in October. So um, many of the research projects may be um, are using REDCAP, but some are also using the um, in-house or bespoke data databases. Um, the REDCAP is being used by LYZ the end, um, the coordinating center to run various surveys and capture data as well. So um, we started our organization during COVID so that we, 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 didn't, we couldn't meet face to face. So we developed this digital ecosystem using a platform called Cognitive City. We could feed it structured and structured information to see who are the various players, who are the various projects, where are they based. Um, and we use this to engage a bit and ask questions also of the platform um, to see who was who was based in which, which countries and then which projects perhaps had a, a footprint in, in Nigeria. We could see various like uh, five projects have a footprint in Nigeria, or we could look at a specific project and see where they had activities as well. It's a very a training intensive program, um, but Al Wazi is still going to use this for various activities. Um, that's a cognitive city tool. Um, so yeah, I'm just focusing on the training working group and the players here, the the, the key people here are Verena Ress. She is the um, the chair. Bill Hirsch is the co-chair at the moment, and Rolanda Julius um, is the co um, consortium training coordinator. And um, she really interacts with the research training hubs, but also all the projects that are providing training, trying to get information from them on what they're offering, how many students they have, when their programs start, and so on. So we have some information here. We can see some have already um, have an intake of master's students, trainees, unspecified um, what they were doing, perhaps. Um, and then doctoral students and so on. Um, and we're still collecting this information. Rolanda prepared this bar graph. We see the projects listed on the x-axis and then the types of students they've enrolled. Some have just uh, PhDs and some have a combination of short-term training and trainees and so on. But we're still in the process of collecting this information as well. Um, so one of the key activities of the of the coordinating center and the training working group is to develop a uh, introductory course into data science and because it's interdisciplinary um, the consortium and we have um, different types of individuals that will be needing this training from your perhaps your medical doctor to a scientist or a bioinformatician so we have to map the skills needed to various competencies and this is what they're doing at the moment so they have a process for this, they've already identified the needs. They've introduced, um, they have um, presented these needs and gaps to the consortium to say, this is what, what is needed. And they will develop their personas and competencies and hopefully have the um, curriculum for this data science course um, by 2024 and roll it out. But we can, you can speak more to that group if, you, if you're interested in that particular um, activity. So um, one of our responsibilities is also to support data funds at our consortium meetings. Um, we um, were um, we worked with um, Dr. Judith Choyo at the heat at the Haiti lab, which is the lab based at Emory. She um, her group organized a AI 
buyers status on in August. And we were fortunate enough to work with the group to the run up to the data zone to see what's going on in the background, to see how, you know, the challenges with big data sets moving them from service to service and what was needed to work on those data sets and how they set up that infrastructure. So it's really complicated. So it's still a learning curve for us, but we participated and it was a really great experience and we hope to implement some of that in our um, data thons. So we will run another data thon this November at the consortium meeting, working with um, various projects like the this USIMA group and also um, IBM Africa with Skylist Pigment that has some code that we would like to apply to these um, these data to see what um, we can uncover. So that's an ongoing um, project there. So for the outreach and uh, stakeholder engagement, we work at multiple levels, as I said, with the partnerships and outreach group. And this partnerships and outreach working group is open to external members, so you can join that. They meet weekly, they meet online. They meet face to face at the consortium meeting, so that is an open component of our uh, consortium. Those network exchanges, of course, and as I said, we host guests at our various meetings as well. Um, so this is the uh, group photo from our first face to face meeting, November twenty twenty two, and some of the in person working group activities. Um, and of course, this is the network exchange, and I think we spoke about that earlier. I won't go over over that again. Um, so this was from the previous network exchange where we hosted um, many industry, many um, external um, stakeholders cut across academia of um, various other um, funding organizations. So we have Science for Africa. We also have Welcome Trust, which has a data science funding um, opportunity, and they will, I think, launch that again and offer um, funding and once we have that information we will also share that on our news flash perhaps on the website they will also be attending our um consortium meeting in november in kigali this is um just to highlight our kigali meeting happening the, between the 4th and 9th of november in kigali and as i said previously i think we 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 um had a workshop hosted a workshop with it at the deep plum in, in daba at least four projects attended i think one project the ds 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 change project had at least about eight students attending that deep learning in daba so that was really great to get to know them um, we are also responsible for our social media and increasing our following on Twitter or X, but we will have to watch the space for developments in it's quite an interesting time for, for this platform. So just to thank my team, uh, Rolanda, Tanya, and Tino, and Francis, and then there's also Shona and Ashley that's joined more recently. Um, and of course, the extended team from Alwazi, Nikki, Sumir, and in NIH folks, Laura, Amit, that's always working very closely with us. Um, yeah, and that's the team. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle, for the presentation. So next up, we will have uh, Dr. Sumit Banji from the OLZ OESP. Thank you, Sumit. Thank you, Michelle. Ah, sorry, so as I say, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sumri Panji. I'm part of the Iliwazi ODSP project, and I'll just talk a little bit more about that and this talk. Okay, so the Iliwazi Open Data Science Platform is meant to facilitate the development of a trans uh, an African network of data sciences, and we also aim to provide the tools and the infrastructure and the capacity development for data science within the DSI Africa Consortium. As Michelle Salatin mentioned, the DSI Africa Consortium consists of research hubs, which are meant to advance and demonstrate the feasibility of data science and research uh, for health in Africa. We have the training programs that will provide master's and PhD um, degrees for data science in Africa and the LC projects as well. So within that, the open data science platform tends to facilitate um, the data, the interchange between data, access, and tools and compute. Uh, so the aims we need to fulfill is each of the research hubs have multiple partners and have multiple data sets, which they are trying to integrate. And what we need is users to actually be able to find the data, identify the tools, and run the analysis. And that might be on-premises where the data is located. 
um, because the data can't move. And the projects will also need to access storage and compute for their own projects as well. The computational infrastructure solution that we provide needs to be feasible within the African context. And to that end, Iliwazi aims to be a flexible and scalable platform that will enable the implementation of data science that will be relevant for health research in Africa and for the DSI African projects. Uh, so how do we support the DSI Africa Consortium? Uh, we do that through a couple of ways. We do that through either data, tools, computing, and training. Uh, so in terms of data, that includes uh, getting the data sets, storing the data, getting reference data sets, doing data harmonization, and teaching, and also ensuring the DSI Africa data is made fair, findable, um, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And we'll do that through data portals, a metadata catalog, and we also provide extensive red cap support to the DSI Africa Consortium. In terms of tools, people will need to analyze the data to turn that data into information, and we'll try and make software stacks available for tools people need on a compute environment. Uh, we'll try and adapt and develop new tools and help uh, teach people how to containerize the tools so those tools can be used on multiple different compute infrastructures around Africa. And we also encourage the use of workflows as well to enable reproducible science. In terms of computing, we'll provide the infrastructure to make the components in available on multiple environments that look the same. Uh, we'll try and facilitate the use of cloud computing through uh, programs such as NI Straight that provide discounted um, access to cloud compute platforms such as GCP and Amazon and Azure. And we also want to create an ease of access to computing facilities and ensuring security is placed as, as, as required, especially if these data sets are controlled access data sets. Um, a lot of this also will depend or set around training and outreach. So we're working with the DSI African Consortium to develop a curriculum based on competencies, competencies for data science. We're hosting training materials and we provide a lot of training on data science material uh, methods as well and on the Iliwazi platform. So Iliwazi itself consists of seven African partners. It's led by Professor Nicola Mulder from the Division of Computational Biology at the University of Cape Town. Uh, uh, we have partners based in Mali, in Uganda, in Mauritius, and in South Africa. And we have three international partners, two in the US and one in the UK. Uh, the university itself is, consists of five working groups. We have the infrastructure working group led by Jonathan Lawson and Harriet Bota. We have the data management working group within university that's led by Tony Burnett and Lyndon Zass. We have the tools and workflows uh, working group that's led by Ben Vizier and Shakuntla Bachu. We have the outreach training and user support uh, working group led by Daudi Jingo and Nikki Mulder. And we have the monitoring and sustainability group uh, that's uh, led by Victor and Joglini and myself. So in terms of Elazi, what we're trying to do is we're trying to adopt a data biosphere concept. So the way that data biosphere works is people can come in through the scientific portals and the data is indexed and in search, which can be found by these different portals. And these portals sit atop the digital object catalog so in the data index and search, it can be uh, searched from different data stores that can be located in different countries or in different cloud providers. And so when somebody comes in, they're very agnostic to where the actual data resides. But what they're finding is the metadata of the data that they're looking for. And if they're happy with the data, depending on the access controls or if the access needs to be applied or not, they can move the data into a workspace and they can compute on the data. And in order to compute on the data, they can import the tools or workflows or any other applications that use for analysis of data and bring that into the workspace. And we try to provide a user interface through Jupyter Notebooks as well, and a native command line interface as well. A lot of what we're doing is built on the Global Alliance for Genomics and, and Health Standards. So they enable responsible data sharing for health data and they're building standards and APIs to enable this. Uh, the standards APIs enable data discovery and people to identify the data, find where the data sits, and also compute on the data. And uh, executing analysis of multiple computing environments. So in some ways, the data doesn't need to live the actual environment it's hosted on, but somebody can visit the data and also compute on it. Uh, so this is just a quick overview of the Iliwazi uh, ODSP. So you have a user that interacts with the gateway. They come in through, they'll find the training materials, documentation, help desk, and the public data portals. If it's a registered user, they can enter the workspace by logging in. They can search data and receive data sets. Uh, the data sets will be biomedical data or they'll be mapped to metadata models, which will try and harmonize to uh, dictionaries between the projects. 
Uh, this will be then served to a data catalog in a repo, which users can search for the data, retrieve the data set, import it into the workspace, and choose the tools they want to compute and select the compute. The compute can either be on a local compute infrastructure or it could be on a cloud infrastructure as well. And the tools we envision that a lot of the tools and containers and workflows will be hosted on Docstore so people can actually pull those through to the compute environment. In terms of data, uh, we're working with the DSI Africa projects to map the biomedical data into data dictionaries and to create uh, metadata models with them. We're also trying to harmonize the metadata across the different DSI Africa projects itself so you can get a bigger data sets and people can try and um, integrate more data when they search for this. The access to the data sets will be via a data registry service or DRS, which is a JF4J standard. And we envision users to store the data sets either on in cloud buckets that could be on premises within the local jurisdiction and on the local infrastructure, or it could be through a cloud vendor itself. And we'll try and include reference data sets for people to compute against. Uh, so the data, as I said, can be sitting in multiple locations, but all of the data and metadata will be pulled into a portal, and this will be indexed into metadata, which allow it to be searched. And the data repository service will also be able to provide URLs to where this data sits and the metadata sits. And whether it sits in an Amazon bucket, in a local bucket, or in a cloud somewhere, it should be able to be pulled and served on the actual metadata catalog. And it should give you a location to where the data is actually stored. So in terms of the data management working group, there are a couple of things that we're doing. One is the FAIR requirements for the DSI Africa projects, which is a project that we're doing to ensure that the DSI Africa data is made FAIR, which is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Uh, we're trying to map the data to data models, which are common and unique to the different groups as well. Uh, we're trying to do some data, data harmonization across the projects. So this can provide more integrated data sets for users to find. And we want to serve that data in data portals for people to search and look at the data. So we'll try and index the data in the data portals for searchability. At just the data management working group, they've been quite active and they've organized a couple of workshops and training for the DSR Africa projects. Now the concepts covered have been around fair principles, assessment, data harmonization, a focus on data models using OMOP and data standards as well. Uh, we do have a basic uh, catalog up, which is just the basic metadata from the DSF Africa projects and the schemes that have been investigated. So it can be accessed at the URL that's provided over here. In terms of tools, uh, one does need to compute on the data to turn that into information. So we have a beginner to advance access to tools. So a beginner will probably be using um, stuff like Jupyter Notebooks and more advanced will probably be using command line interfaces but we can identify science tools that people would like to use and add them to a software stack. Or we can ask people to come with their own tools to add them to our software stack, but we'd probably require them to have it containerized just so it's interoperable with our workspaces. Uh, so one can log in, one can go to the workspaces, they can search the data and they can retrieve the data and then they can run the tools. So you can choose your tools. You can have your workflows which are available via Dexco, which can pull into your computer environment or they can be executed using the workflow execution service. So I can pull down a workflow that's sitting in Cape Town and try and run it on data that's sitting in Mali and it should be able to give me the results back. Um, in terms of the tools, we do have a Terra Iliwas instance up which people can uh, access and they can log in using the Google account or an Azure account if they have one. We also provide a lot of training around Docstore and uh, Terra and other technologies that we're planning to use for the tools. And in terms of the actual infrastructure itself, uh, the data sets will, the compute will be either run either on your local premises where the data sits or it's connected through a cloud storage bucket, or you can choose to move the compute onto a cloud platform of your choice or onto the on-prem uh, where it's available for you. Uh, we'd like to have three sites that will uh, host the Eliwazi. One of them will be at the Elifu Center, Elifu at the University of Cape Town. The second site will be at the University of Science, Technologies and Techniques in Bamako, Mali. And the third one will be at Makerere University in Kampala, Uganda. The Mali and Makerere nodes are actually part of the African Center for Excellence in Bioinformatics and Data Intensive Science. And they have quite a significant um, expertise in terms of big data and infrastructure as well. So we'll be partnering with them to try and roll out the same infrastructure to um, African scientists. 
Uh, in terms of training and outreach, we're quite active with that. So my colleague, Verena Ross, has prepared a whole starter pack, a whole pack on how to organize workshops and training events, which is quite useful for people that are going into starting off to organize workshops, whether they be degree programs or short workshops or blended hybrid courses. So this is a really useful uh, material or resource if people would like to uh, look at this. Uh, in terms of training and outreach, we've also hosted a couple of workshops. So one of them was the GA4JH Technical Implementations of Standards. This was aimed at the sysadmins and software developers that are working on the data stores within the different DSI Africa projects to try and make our data interoperable or make sure that we're using common standards to ensure interoperability between our, uh, our infrastructures. We had the Data Catalog Jamboree that was aimed mostly at the data managers and the analysis cores within the research hubs. And a lot of that covered data harmonization and building of data Catalog and fair data hammer assessments. We're planning a workflows and tools containerization workshop in conjunction with the Mediva project, which will run between the 2nd to the 6th of October. And this is aimed at data scientists, junior faculty, and researchers for how to make the tools and analysis pipelines reproducible by teaching them how to containerize the tools and create workflows with analysis scripts, and then introduce them to the EDWASI platform and help them run some of the stuff on that as well. Uh, we are planning to host an annual research data management workshop, which will run every year. Initially, it was provided by H3 Binet, and it will be adopted by Um The course curriculum has seven modules that cover a lot of, mostly of the research data management that's needed in today's day and age, uh, especially when you look at genomic or data, uh, big data. In terms of training and outreach, we also have a help desk where people are allowed to, well, people can submit their queries. If you have any queries, please do submit it through a help desk and we'd be more than happy to assist you through that. And we're also quite, um, we're quite active in various forums and fora and exhibitions as well. So if you do see us in any of the upcoming events, please do pass by and um, chat to us. So this is what we want to work to do, where a person could come in as a user, sign into a workspace, search for a catalog of data sets. It doesn't matter the data sets, sits, um, in a different continent or in, in, in a different location uh, to just return the metadata of that. And then you can fetch the required tools and you can fetch the required data or you can send your compute to the required data, choose your compute and run on it and get your results. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge all the uh, partners for the EDWASI uh, ODSP platform and the chairs and co-chairs. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you so much to me for that presentation. So we will now go into uh, Q&A. So seeing that we're a relatively large group, uh, what we'll do is that you can raise your hand and then I'll acknowledge you and then you can ask your question. And alternatively, you can pop your question in the chat and we'll answer it from there. So yes, I'll open up the floor now. Any questions for Sumir or Michelle? I see there was a question in the chat from Rita. Um, they were asking how um, can we collaborate? Uh, I'm not sure if maybe Rita, if you want to unmute and um, provide more context, so um, shall maybe you can respond. Yeah, it would be good to have um, some more context in terms of what specifically we want to collaborate on, because of course there's a range of research projects that deal with various health issues. These are training projects, these are Alwazi, ODSP, it's pretty technical <laughs> and has lots of resources. So um, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so it'd be good to know if there's a specific uh, you know, health area that you're interested in, or is it more technical training or so on? Okay, whilst we wait, uh, anyone else? Oh, any other maybe if, if I could just also add a little bit to this conversation, um, because I get a lot of questions on how can we collaborate, please? Um, and I think I, I really appreciate Clement Ademamo because uh, he was asked that question ages ago. And I think when somebody wants to collaborate, I think there are three things you need to think about. One, what exactly do you have to offer the person you're going to collaborate with? What exactly can a person you're collaborating with offer you as well? So a collaboration is also a partnership. So I think if you want to collaborate, I think find out what areas you're strong at and where you can provide assistance and what resources you're able to provide. 
and also then determine what resources would you need and then seek out partners accordingly. And then you can write to them and you have a more targeted approach. And I think people are more willing to collaborate if you've taken the time and the effort to understand the work and show how you can add value to their work or how you can provide them a value proposition then when you provide just an open question of how can we collaborate, please, because it's a very un, it's a very open question and nobody knows where to start there as well. So I think when you do look for collaborations, especially this kind of forum, be very specific with what skills you have, what you have to offer and what the other person could provide with you as well. Thanks. Um, as I also mentioned there's the opportunity to join the partnerships and outreach group and I mean I don't know if um leader had an opportunity to go to the other presentations from the various projects the research projects the RLC projects um and with the research projects there is some opportunity sometimes and we and um sometimes it's also internal that they do um send out a call for um, small collabor collaborations and offer seed funding um, but that is very much determined by the research projects and the coordinating center doesn't have that information at this point we only get it when they send it to us and then we dis disseminate that so there are those small opportunities it's not I don't think it's large funding opportunities but that's sort of a starting point to to collaborate with someone but on a very specific um, component of that bigger research project. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, you can pop it in the chat or you can raise your hand and mute. Nathan, go ahead. Hi. Um, I just like. Uh... I think I missed the part about the um, Red Cup training. Um, the Red Cup administrators meeting coming up. Could you kindly go over that? Uh, okay, so I can talk about that. So we run, a, uh, we as in Ashi Barnett and together with WITS have run the Red Cup Africa Consortium. And um, Catherine is quite active in that. I'm not sure if Tendai is on this. He was here earlier. He's also quite active with the Red Cap Africa Forum. So we have been provided coordinating Red Cap training around that. And if you're part of the Red Cap Africa Consortium um, group, then I think you'll probably be seeing a lot of those others going out for that. We do have a Red Cap Africa Day that's coming up, I think, between the 19th to the 20th of October, and that will be hosted at Cape Town. Um, so they will be providing some training around that as well. Is there anything else specific around that you'd like to find out more about, Nathan? Um, so in in our organization, we recently um, got the Red Cup license. So I'm sort of a new Red Cup administrator. So just uh, okay. for such opportunities. Okay, so there's a system admin training that's going on. Um, maybe, would you mind popping me your email, Nathan, and I can make some introductions for you. you can just pop your email right. in the chat. Right. Which, which organization are you from? The West African Genetic Medicine Center. Okay, are, are you aware of in the Red Cap? Are, are you aware of the Red Cap Africa group? Um, no, I wasn't. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, pop, pop your email address and let's see if we can get you signed up with them because that's where you find support. One of the biggest things we found with RedCap uh, with RedCap within Africa is we get a lot of requests for how do you set up a RedCap, so a lot more sysadmin requests, and then we have a lot more user requests once the system is up. So just pop me your email and I'll put you in touch with the right people. Great. questions from anyone we still have about 15 minutes for any more questions while people are thinking um you know there was in the in the previous round people were asking about machine learning and ai training opportunities and some of the projects are offering that and I, I put Rolanda's email in the group. Um, they are about, let me just have a look. 
the washer project is offering machine learning training and then as well as the apria dsi project as well but i think if people um can reach out to 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 Rolanda to find out if there are spaces for for external folks as well you know um if it's and also whether it's an online opportunity or a blended opportunity or, or what that may look like so i can i can just put her email again in the in the chat okay. Okay. Um, anyone else? Any question? Not are there any uh, closing remarks from our presenters? Okay, Nathan, you have your hand up. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, so just another quick question. Just wanted to know, um, are they, are they, um, uh, how do I put this? Let's say, are there opportunities to uh, volunteer to DSI Africa in any of the groups? Um, I think that, um, Michelle can correct me if I'm wrong. I think the partnership and outreach working group is one that's open to uh, to um, to everyone to join. I'm not sure what the membership of the other working groups are. If one needs to be affiliated to the SI Africa project or not, but definitely the partnerships and net and outreach working group is open to everyone. Yeah, um, and then for instance, we're having we're hosting the meeting in Kigali in Rwanda this year, this November. So if you base there, you're welcome to come to that. Oh, we have the, I think it's the, the sixth of Monday, we're having a network exchange, but a face-to-face -face one. So people bring along the um, poster about what they're doing or, you know, just come and see what and, and engage with, with people. But um, unfortunately, if you're not there, then you have to get there basically. Um, so that's one way of, of getting involved. Um, but when you say volunteer, um, what do you mean? Like, um, what would you like to do? Would you like to train? Would you like to <laughs> be a trainer, be a facilitator? Is that, is, what, is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Yes, so train or be a trainer or um help out with um you know organizing events things like that i think that you have francis's contact details and maybe reach out to him because he's pretty much um one of the leads on the on facilitators on the partnerships on outreach so so just um reach out to him thanks a lot Then, um, any other questions from anyone? So if not, uh, I think we can close this room if you can join or you can feel free to go and join one of the other rooms or um, go back to the main room where we'll be moving on in about 10 minutes time. Thank you guys for the questions and thank you to our presenters.